It was taken up uh, with a lot of community support by FASB. After a very thoughtful process, they came to the conclusion unanimously that they should give Bitcoin fair value accounting treatment rather than indefinite and tangible accounting treatment. The latest uh, communication on that indicated that they'll make this mandatory for all public uh, reporting companies uh, as of December 15th of next year. The uh, significance of fair value accounting coming to Bitcoin is it makes the asset non-toxic for an operating company to hold or a company that uses gap accounting. It also um, makes it transparent, uh, the performance of Bitcoin backed companies to be transparent. And so that's a, a positive feedback loop, right? When Bitcoin companies are performing well, it'll be obvious to Wall Street and they'll want to finance more of them, right? So that's a secondary benefit. And the third is um, because Bitcoin is a commodity, it's a financial commodity, um, it can be held on the balance sheet of an operating company where um, right now only treasury assets or, or, or sovereign debt type assets can be held on that balance sheet. Uh, as a as a treasury uh, strategy. Now, if you think about your treasury strategy, um, the treasury strategy of an operating company is we want something which is liquid and fungible and low risk. So traditionally, the most liquid, fungible, low risk financial asset is just the dollar, the local currency, maybe the euro, maybe the dollar. And so it's the obvious thing to do. I'm, I, I collected uh, $100 million this month. I put it in the bank. Now, the problem with that is that the dollar doesn't generate a yield. And the dollar is, is a depreciating, uh, debasing financial asset. So in a world where the dollar gets inflated 7% a year, if the money supply of U.S. currency increases 7% a year, and it has over the past 100 years, then a billion dollars in cash is going to cost you 70 million a year in purchasing power. And of course, at 7% a year, over the course of 10 years, you'll cut your asset value in half. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, that uh, a treasury strategy based just on currency isn't awesome. Um, it's dilutive. Um, the question here is, what's the next best thing? Well, the next best thing is sovereign debt. Um, sovereign debt is, is debt issued by a government. Uh, so you've got the most credit worthy counterparty, maybe the United States government. You don't really think they're going to default. And that's the advantage of sovereign debt. You might take on duration risk. If you buy long term bonds when the interest rates are low and interest rates go up, then the bond will trade down and you could get wiped out that way. That happened to a bunch of banks about a year ago, Silicon Valley Bank and the like. They bought long dated credit instruments and interest rates jumped from zero to 500 basis points. Problem with commodities is there's a dysfunctional, systemic, endemic inflation built into the system. Is, uh, is it possible for someone to create more oil? It is a certain thing that when the price of oil triples, they will create a lot more oil and no one is concerned about keeping the supply of oil in check over the long term. There's this dysfunctional competition. Um, you can try to create a cartel like OPEC, but uh, people that aren't in the OPEC, like the frackers in Texas, they're not in OPEC and they're going to frack oil and they're going to bust that cartel. And, and all of these commodities find their cartels broken and the gold miners want to produce more gold. The silver people want to produce more silver. Soybeans want to produce more soybeans. So commodities aren't scarce. And, and I want to distinguish between that kind of um, ungoverned inflation or dysfunctional inflation versus the governed inflation of equities. You know, Apple Computer uh, or any, any company in the S&P 500 can also issue more stock. And if... If you buy infinite amounts of the S&P index, you'll get a lot more stocks. They will issue more stocks during, you know, during the height of the market boom in uh, 2021. 
when you had GameStop and you had all the meme stocks, you saw all these people printing a lot of equity and selling it to the market. And that's the danger of those assets. But imagine there were a hundred companies called Apple and they could all print Apple stock and people want Apple stock. So maybe Tim Cook wouldn't, but the Apple competitor number four in Timbuktu, they could and they could sell Apple stock. Well, in that case, they're all going to print as much as they can to drive the price down because they're ungoverned. And, and in fact, they have an incentive to sell the stock. And so that's what it's like in the commodities business. Somebody somewhere has an incentive to drive the price of that commodity down and they will sell as much as they can get their hands on. And so that being the case, there's never been a commodity like Bitcoin that was scarce. The closest thing uh, to uh, something like Bitcoin would be um, acreage in Palm Beach or acreage in Miami Beach. Not, not the square footage, but rather the underlying dirt. Because there's only so many linear feet of beachfront property in Palm Beach for the last hundred years. And no amount of money printing, and no amount of capital, and no amount of technology, and no amount of manufacturing know-how creates more beachfront property in Palm Beach. So when you look at that scarce desirable property that you can't create more of, you can see that actually does go up in value. That's gone up by a factor of a thousand in the last hundred years, thousand X. And that appreciates at the rate that the money expands. But the problem is it's not a treasury asset. I can't buy and sell square feet of Palm Beach every day in the market. I can't liquidate it on demand. So the kind of property that I would want to hold, I can't hold as the CFO of a publicly traded company. The kind of stuff I can hold, sovereign debt, it isn't scarce. And it's a currency derivative. And so Bitcoin is this new thing. It is a digital scarcity that's liquid, that's fungible, that gets commodity treatment, that I can hold on a balance sheet as a treasury asset and while the currency is not generating a yield and the bonds aren't trading up in asset value and they're generating taxable yield and it, with a negative real yield, Bitcoin will appreciate in price tax deferred. Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, has a big idea. He thinks the way we do things is going to change a lot. Why? Well, he's all about cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and the technology behind them. Sailor is betting on a future where these digital currencies take over, making regular money and banks less important. It could change how we buy things and save our money. If he's right, the future might look very different, with everyone using digital cash instead of dollars and euros. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.